Good morning for Morea Island, uh, just off of Tahiti. Um, we are going to celebrate World Update 13, uh, which is for Oceana. And we're also going to be taking this wonderful ATR 72600 in the Air Tahiti livery um, up to Bora Bora. So I really wanted to do a, like, first day release, first look, first flights review tutorial type thing with this. But um, I decided that wasn't the best course of action and really wanted to take some time to actually get used to the aircraft and its systems because they are a little different. Um, and they market, marketed this as a, quote, expert model, um, which I know a lot of people are mad that it was called that, but I think they're mixing that up with study level expert um i would say is a marketing term but it does require a little bit more knowledge than say a default aircraft which is not expert by any stretch of the imagination so for example the mcdu we do need to put in flight plans you can't import them and you can't make it in the world map which is true to real life. You would actually need to go through the MCDU, learn its functionality, learn how to put in your weights um, and all the performance and everything like that. So that is more of, I think, what they were saying when it comes to expert. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, that's the way I took it. Um, and so because of that, I've taken some time to go through, um, watch some real world videos. Uh, there's some great ones on YouTube about how to set up the MCDU and things like that. Um, and you know how this aircraft has actually flown and its performance, all that good stuff to compare it to what we are going to experience today. So let's get right on into having a look at the outside. We've already been panning around a little bit here. You can see that the textures on this livery are actually very good. Um, we do have a lot of high res uh, detail um, and the fonts are very clear on the 42 and possibly some other liveries for um this one the uh, actual icing boots here are very jagged underneath the wing on here they are nice crisp and clear so uh this i would say is the best example of the uh liveries the one part that i would say is a little bit of a letdown is the nose of the aircraft um, you can see that there is some kind of weird blotchiness and shadows around the seams um, with some clipping going on. Um, it's not horrible, but um, it doesn't match really the rest of the aircraft. And it doesn't stand out all that much, but it is um, a little strange that it does have just on this sort of like section um, is not up to scratch compared to the rest of the aircraft. Um, this... I love this livery. I think it, they've done a great job. And you can see we have another Air Tahiti uh, 72600 behind us because they do fly in and out of this airport. And we're just going to be flying from here, uh, doing a fun flight up to Bora Bora. So um, let's go ahead and jump on into the cockpit and co have a look at the textures in there. All right, so before we uh, actually have a look at things, is since it's early hours, I'm going to go ahead and get our external power on. On your EFB or your tablet over here, um, we can turn on our ground power unit, um, and you can also access all the other options as well, so like the staircase door, tail prop, all that good stuff. But we just have the wheel chocks on and our ground power unit. And you can see that it is listed as available. So we can just go ahead and click on our battery. Give that a second to do its sort of tests. So will click over. There we go. Click on available. And we might as well uh, go through and we can just get rid of uh, most of these white lights. Uh, we're going to leave our icing um, to... Um, off right now and let's get uh all the lights on that we can just so that way everyone can have a good look at things here so um i'm gonna come back out of my head tracker here and we'll have a little walk around now inside the aircraft um there's like kind of like good um medium and blotchy i wouldn't say any of it's necessarily bad 
but you can see that there is a little bit of blotchiness on some of the textures on the panels. Um, the seats themselves, they're, they're okay. Are they super high res? No, but they're not bad. You do have some interactions with, you know, armrests and things like that, uh, which is nice to see. Um, I did <laughs> add a little bit of a chuckle with, uh, let me turn off this master caution here. Um, I want to clear these out too. Oh, there. Okay. Um, that uh, <laughs> the cockpit is too gray and not blue gray. Um, and that was like a source of contention for some people, which made me chuckle. Um, well, that might be true. Uh, only a real ATR pilot is going to really pick up on that. Um, the important part for me is that all of the fonts and text is high res and is very easy to read. It is crisp. It is clear throughout the entire cockpit, even in areas where it doesn't matter, um, such as back here on your circuit breakers, which they, they are not interactive. Again, this is not study level. Um, this is there's no random failures or anything like that that are programmed into this. This is just quote unquote expert level. Um, so uh, we do have some interactions with the um, cockpit doors and also the cabin doors. Um, you can see how ridiculously bright it is back here, which is one of the things that uh, I hope they update to turn down this because at nighttime, um, it looks like, I don't know, just a glowing stick flying through the night sky because it is just so bright back here. And the way that is controlled is um, back up here, um, you have this cab light there, which also turns it off in here. Um, and now you can see that in the in the back, let me just jump to the back here, um, that it is just dark. So I, I would like to see that updated. Um, so that way there is more of a dim setting on there. Maybe that's the way it is in real life and they just need to tone down how bright it is. But um, there, it's definitely in what I consider too bright back there. And it looks kind of odd at, at nighttime. Uh, so that's sort of going over the actual textures of the cockpit. Let's go ahead and jump on into getting things set up uh, for our flight. All right, so we already have our external power on. Um, what I'm going to do just to demonstrate this right away is we can get us into what's called hotel mode, uh, which we can then disconnect the GPU, um, which would turn basically our engine two into an APU or auxiliary power power unit, basically a generator without the prop spinning to give us power to the aircraft. So the way we are going to do that, we have both our pumps on. We need to go ahead and turn this over. You can do start A or start A and B, either one. Um, and then we're just going to start up engine one or sorry, engine two, but we need to make sure that our prop brake is on. Now that is powered by our um, hydraulic power here. So you, even though it's on low power, um, you do need those on. And then you can come on down um, here. We wanna make sure that we are in shut off. Actually, before we go any further, I do want to demonstrate something that um, I did see some remarks about that um, also was uh, incorrect, is on the outside of the aircraft and the props, you can see right now that they are absolutely feathered. Um, if we come back into the aircraft and I click these up into auto, jump to the outside, you can see that those do animate into, um, you know, non-feathered or that's when they're in auto. If we come back in and click them down, we can see that that actually does animate and go in and out of feather. So um, that is great to have that animated in there um, and does work appropriately, um, which is great. So that's controlled by your shutoff levers here uh, or your condition levers. Feather is obviously feathered. Once you get into auto, they come out of feather and um, will actually be ready to go. So um, to get us into hotel mode, we are gonna come up and we are on our Ignition is on start A. We're going to hit on start two. And if we just watch 
our um, NH percentage here. As soon as it gets over 10%, we can click it from shut off into feather. And then that's going to rise on up above 60. We'll go ahead and hit that master caution. That's saying that our air bleed on one is not functioning because it's not running at all. Um, so you can see that's stabilized. Our start um, enunciator is off. So we can go ahead and disconnect from our external power and get rid of the ground power unit. And that is all you need to do. If we go back to the outside of the aircraft, you can hear the engine is running, but the prop is not moving. So that is, you can do that on battery power as well. Flip on the battery, go through those same steps, and you can do it without a ground power unit um, and be good to go. So we are set up there. Um, if you come down onto your, uh, I think this is uh, an EIS is what they stand for, in, uh, Engine Instrument System. It might have a different name, but um, that's what I'm going to call it. We do have a way to check um, through our checklists here. This is like an up arrow, down arrow, and a validate button. Um, these aren't actually touch screens, but the controls for those are way back here, which in real life, it's nice and easy to use. Uh, and the sim, because we can't put our hands back there while looking there, um, they've done this as a workaround, which works out very well. So uh, we're going to come through our pending checklist here. This is just a sort of um, disclaimer so we can validate that. And then um, we're going to wait for that one because we're going to get our MCDU set up first. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Sorry. Um, and to get this going, we're going to hit our sort of that FMS button there, and then we're going to come over to our init page. First, we need to get our position in. You can select your GPS position, which puts it down in the scratch pad, and you can pop that in and then go ahead and pop it underneath the sensor button. Apparently, in the newest versions of these, uh, you don't even need to do that. It draws all that information automatically, but we are going to uh, do it as this aircraft requires. Uh, our nav data is out of date. Um, I don't know if that is a simulator issue or this aircraft issue. As far as I know, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator does have the latest data in, so I'm not sure if this is just an incorrect reading or if it is actually drawing the wrong data. But either way, uh, that should be up to date, and it is not. Uh, we're then going to come over to our weight. But first, I am going to... Oops, not weather. Uh, we are in live weather, by the way. Um, if I come over to our weights and balances, um, we're not doing a very long flight, so I'm just going to bring this down to, say, 33%. And let's just go 50% for our uh, weights there, and we can close this. So nice thing with uh, this MCDU is that if when we come over to weight, instead of having to calculate this, say if you don't have like a uh, sim brief profile or anything like that, all you need to do is just hold down the button, pops it in, hold down the button, pops it in, and that's going to calculate all your performance numbers for you, um, which is great. So um, if we come over to our first page, you can see it calculated in our V1, VR, and V2. Um, and we can follow through now with our perf in it, and we can put in our cruise altitude. We're coming up to 15,000 feet. Um, you can see, uh, oh, yeah, it takes us back to our weight, return. Return, eh, where am I going here? Data, and in it. There we go. So um, you can check your units. I'm used to uh, FAA and US standards, so none of mine <laughs> makes sense, um, which I realize. Uh, but uh, so we're Fahrenheit pounds and inches um, versus doing Celsius kilograms. And uh, I always forget what that one is, but um, we are using uh this setup you can also set this up in your electronic flight uh bag as well so uh we are good to go on our units um from here we can just go ahead and get in our flight plan all right i want to show you guys what we're going to do outside the aircraft first so this is a navigraph but you can find many free 
uh, programs in order to do kind of the same thing. Uh, I think Little Nav Map is one that is pretty popular. Um, I personally um, haven't used it. I did try it once, and I was just the interface. It is free, uh, but the interface was um, <laughs> something I didn't want to take the time to learn, so I just went back to Navigraph. Uh, but you can see we are here down at uh, Morea Island. Here's Tahiti. Um, we're going to be taking off runway 1, 2, heading this way. And so I'm just going to use heading mode, get a nice view of the islands, come around, and then we're just going to do, roughly around here, a direct to Tino. And then that's going to get us on our flight plan. And we're going to be at 15,000 feet. We're going to come up here to uh, Huani? Huanane? Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce these. I ap apologize for my ignorance. Um, and then we're going to fly over to um, Rahatia. And then we're going to come up to Bora Bora. Now I have the approach loaded for Bora Bora. They are a little different than what at least I'm used to uh, flying in the US. Uh, Tahiti has an ILS and RNAVs that'll take you down to the ground. Um, the, this uh, takes you down to here, to this waypoint, and then sort of stops um, and will fly your go around. So what that means is when we're coming in, as we make our descent, it's having us level off at the MDA of 520 feet um, or 450 feet. We'll go with 520 though. Um, and then we'll manually fly that in for the last uh, mile to the actual airport and have to disengage the autopilot or just have it on heading mode and vertical speed mode. But really, I'm just gonna disengage. Uh, but that is our flight plan, and we're going to get that loaded into the MCDU. All you want to do is replicate what is being shown. So our airport is NTTM, and we are going up to NTTB, and pop it in. That's good. Execute. Our first waypoint was that Tino. Go ahead and pop that in. The top one is usually the Siri, one you're going to pick I'm because that sure is going that. to be, uh, sorry, my Siri just thought I said something there. Um, but um, from there, we are going to go over to HHN, pop that in, and then we are going to go to RU, pop that in. And we can go ahead and just execute that now, and that puts it all in green. When it's in yellow, that means it's temporary. Then you have your previous and next buttons here. We have two pages on this flight plan. So we'll come over, and this is our uh, destination. So we can click on that to bring up our, any arrivals or approaches. We're going to be doing the RNAV for runway 11. We can go ahead and click on that. We're going to do via Nomis, and that's what was on that approach uh, plate that I was showing you. So we can go ahead and, and click execute on there and that is all loaded up any discontinuities you want to clear out so just hit clear and clear and execute basically that usually happens when you're from a waypoint to a procedure you'll get a discontinuity error and you just need to clear it out and you're good to go right now on our flight plan it is showing the ete and the um estimated fuel on board you click this button, which I find more useful, it's going to show us our ETA, uh, but more importantly, uh, it shows us our constraints for our altitude. So you can see it does have the correct constraint of 2000 or above for NOMIS, which is the sort of initial fix on our approach. Uh, and then Bokol is same again, 2000 or above. And then you can see that that last uh, sort of final fix there is at 2000 um, and then this one is saying 379 um, and you can see that those do not have an A or a B meaning that they are going to be crossing at those points and you can double check that by clicking on here you can see as we're descending down it's going to cross that waypoint at 3909 feet if we wanted to make it 2000 you could go ahead and click in 2000 and enter in the alternate constraint without the A and it would adjust accordingly to get you to cross that at 2000, which let's double check on that chart. Um, Bokel is the first that is um, 
at 2,000. So we, we do want to do that, actually. Actually, let me go back and check. It shows 2,000, but this is mandatory. So it is still, you can be above. But let's let's try it out. We're going to go ahead and um, actually 2,000. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, 2,000 with no letter. Uh, execute that. And you can see now it's adjusted it to cross at 2,000. And we'll just be level flying over to um, the... FTB11. So you can see 2000, 2000, no A. The one before, though, does have that A. So just a little adjustment there so you can find two things the way you, you want them to be. That'll also give us a little bit better view of the island, I think, as well. So that is our flight plan in. Um, and we should be good to go from there to go ahead and start doing our checklists. Okay, so for our checklist, we can come on down here and uh, these act like little clicky buttons. Uh, there is a sort of, I don't know what to call it, a cheat sheet, but a help section to show you what parts of the screen click do what. You get used to it very quickly though. And it is nice uh, workaround. I don't like this PFD throttle hint, so I'm gonna turn that off. All that does is give you a sort of throttle warning type thing up here. Um, but we're going to go through, uh, we already acknowledged the first step on the cockpit preparation, and we're going to go ahead and do the second one. Um, so we are checking to make sure our parking brake is engaged. It is. Uh, our altimeters, we are going to go ahead and set. I'm just going to be lazy and hit the shortcut key B. Uh, landing elevation check. Um, that's for our cabin pressure. It does it automatically. If you wanted to do manual, you can click there and tune it as you want to. Click it back over to auto and you just get the three green and that's typically the way i leave it uh, we've configured our fms we're not going to be using com nav is an rnav so that's all set in and ready to go we don't have an autopilot set up yet so let's just go ahead and um, so up here is your autopilot panel um, we want our altitude i just grab it and then drag it on over sometimes you got to do that a couple of times here Almost there. Up to 15,000 feet. Now, I want to get there. Um, indicated airspeed, and we're going to be doing heading mode to fly out. So I've got that all set up and good to go. We'll line up our heading mode once we're on the runway. So that is our autopilot configured. And we can go ahead and pick that one. Uh, fuel on board. We are fine. Um, we've got... Uh, just about 3,600 pounds on board. Uh, we'll reset our fuel used. Uh, memo panel is fine. And power management we have set to take off. I'll go over the power management and just uh, uh, really during our takeoff checklist. Um, so our before propeller rotation checklist. We already have us in hotel mode. Um, so we can go ahead now and the CDLS is our cockpit door lock system so we can deny people from coming in that's locked our fms and takeoff data we can go ahead and confirm that and that'll pop in your trim uh data there which i have found that if you go up to what it actually um has suggested uh, it's a little too steep um whether that is accurate or not i don't know so i typically go around like for this weight um, around like 0.7 ish 0.5 to 0.7 um, but you can set it to the center just uh, you might have to uh, watch that initial speed during takeoff because it does sort of uh, get, get you up pretty quickly so our trim is set uh, tail prop is on board doors we can check are all closed uh, seat belts let's go ahead and get our seat belts no device and get our um, emergency exits armed and our beacon light is on and that is our before rotation checklist complete complete so really to get this done we already have our um uh engine two in basically running we just have the prop brake on so we can go ahead and come up here and pop off that prop brake and you'll see now that that is rotating and spinning. Uh, the NP is your prop percent. And starting engine one, 
uh, is essentially the same steps where we're going to go on. And we're just going to wait until that gets up to 10%. There we go. Click that into feather instead of cutoff. That's going to rise up. Our start button has uh, is no longer illuminated, which is good. Our generator fault just came off. Um, these are going to stay on until we get next step, which is actually getting these into um, the auto. So this is basically taking them out of feather and getting them into auto. And that's where we're going to leave them. And you can see that those are now rotating up. And we'll see that all our sort of low power and stuff will um, go away. There they go. So we should have no cautions anymore. And we do not. And it's prompting us for our before taxi checklist now, which is great. So we are good to go there. Um, before taxi checklist, uh, FWS recall. Um, if you want to, you can hit here for that. There is nothing showing. So uh, we are fine there. We can come back. Uh, tick that off. Our cockpit hatch is this guy here. We just want to make sure that that is shut. Uh, our conditioner levers one and two are both in auto. Anti-icing as required. We'll turn on our windshield heat, but uh, leave our probe heats off for now. Our TRU, we can just go ahead and pop that on. Then anti-skid test, we can just come over here. Just to make sure that that's working fine. It is. It is. And then flaps. Uh, we just want to come down to 15. Check. Nose wheel um, is. Uh, nose wheel steering is set by default, and we are good to go. And we can go ahead and bring up our taxi checklist. All right. So taxi takeoff lights. We can go ahead and pop those on. We might as well pop on not strobe. Uh, wing and logo. Uh, that is good. Brakes, we can quickly check those. I'm gonna pop off the parking brake. Oh, wheel chocks are still on, I believe. Yep, pop those off. That's the brakes. That worked out fine. Parking brake, back on. Um, the FGCP, FMA, it, to be honest, I don't know what that is. I think it has something to do with um, the flight planning and the systems in there, but uh, I just marked that as set to go. And then we can Hit our takeoff config test, and we just want to make sure that that goes and is fine, and we are good to go. So for taxiing in this, this thing taxis fantastic, and we can also use our reverse thrust in order to taxi, which really is what we kind of want to do here because we are blocked in, and we do have an aircraft behind us. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take off the parking brake and pop us into reverse thrust. And we don't need much. Pop us back into idle. And this thing just pivots on a dime. So if we come outside, you can see that is going to clear everything just fine. The other aircraft is well out of the way. And we are good. Now, as far as taxiing goes, um, just leave it in idle. Um, it does taxi fine in this setup. Um, I did read some people thinking that it was taxiing too fast and were asking about, uh, you know, putting it into beta and reverse. Uh, you do not do that in this aircraft. Just touch your brakes if you are going too fast. Um, it doesn't get out of control, though. It feels like it does. Like right now, it's like, oh my gosh, we're going fast. One, this is a narrow taxiway, and two, we're low to the ground. We are only going 12 knots right now. Uh, so really, um, you know, 15, 20 knots, no problem whatsoever. Um, we'll probably won't even bust 20 doing this whole taxi. I haven't touched the brakes once yet. Um, and we're just going to taxi on down. You can see we're at 15, 16 now. Um, and if you do need to slow down, just, just use the brakes a little bit. It's not going to burn them up. Um, it's fine. Some turboprops do need uh, some work done to them, though. And um, by the actual book, you would... 
go in and out of uh, beta in order to control your taxi speeds, but on this, it works fine the way it is. You can see we're coming up to 18. Uh, so still under 20 as we're coming up to our turnaround point here. And like I said, this thing just turns around so nicely. We don't need a lot of space at all. Bring it on over. Don't need to use any differential power because of that nose wheel steering. And you can just bring it on over. We'll get lined up here and we'll go through our before takeoff checklist. All right. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and pop on our parking brake. Okay, so if we come on down here, we're going to come on up, down, 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 down before takeoff checklist. So takeoff briefing, um, you know, we're going to be taking off, uh, flying runway heading, and then using heading mode, turning over to, um, I guess that would be to the south to uh, fly around the island and then we're going to do a direct to team mo um we can go ahead and align our heading uh bug now so we are at our runway heading um gust lock we want to pop that off and then once we have that off we can finally move our controls make sure that everything is good to go there um check flight controls for our transponder you can hit the uh service button there and we just want to turn that to on i also want to turn on our weather radar down there that does work um if you want to test it just go ahead preset rain it'll show up just fine and uh it does it is completely functional airflow um you can see that everything is normal in here i also like to check the temp uh to make sure that the um, cabin and also we are okay we're a little warm in here so if we wanted to, we could go manual and crank that, um, crank that down a little bit there, and you'll see that that will actually drop for us. Um, and if we wanted to, we could click it on high to make that even happen faster. Um, once we get in the air, though, um, it'll do a good job by itself to get us down to about 21, 22 degrees. Um, so we are good there. Let's go ahead and advise our cabin crew. Uh, engine bleed as required. External lights. Let's get our landing lights on and strobe light on. Good to go there. Uh, our lateral flight director bar. We just want to make sure that that is good and we are fine there. And rudder is all set to go. Um, and that is our before takeoff checklist complete. I'm just going to bring up our after takeoff checklist so we have that ready to have a look at. So going over our power management now power management is not an auto throttle um, so it is not going to control your speed it is controlling your power and we're going to be climbing out at indicated airspeed which um, you would turn on for the power management selector there and it it's in magenta that means it's being managed um, well manage is the wrong word the reference here is going to be from the power management system. Um, we're still gonna be in charge of monitoring that speed, but in order for this power management to work, you need to be in the white detent here. So this is basically used for takeoff, climb and cruise. Uh, descent, you would come out and reduce your throttle down in order to match up what the reference speed is going to be. So again, not an auto throttle. It is just main managing your power for the stage of flight that you are in. So we're just going to advance that forward um, and, and it'll sort of notch into place. Then once we take off, we're going to rotate that over to climb. And then I'm going to engage our autopilot and let uh, us sort of take off and do our thing, get our landing gear up um, and wait, wait a little bit to get our flaps up and then we will be good to go. Let's go ahead and pop off the parking brake. 
And I'm just going to hold on to the brakes um, here, and we're going to rotate that or push forward our power levers to that uh, detent. So go ahead and start to bring those forward. They sort of like notch right in into place. They kind of jump a little bit there. And then we can release the brakes. Rotation speed on this, I forgot to check, but I think we're around 105. 104 is what we're looking for. Alright, there's 85. 90, 100, 105, and away we go. Pause the rate of climb, you're coming up. I'm gonna switch this over to climb. And we can go ahead and click on our autopilot. That nose is gonna dip just for a second as uh, our speed increases. That's looking good. We can go ahead and start to rotate over. Or bring our flaps up. And you can see we are climbing out nicely. Our speed is going to come up. Our indicated airspeed is going to be locked on at 170. That's a beautiful little island. Let's rotate over a little bit more here. That's your takeoff procedure. Everything is all configured now and we're good to go. And let's have a little look out the window. Well, we got a nice engine in the way here. But there we go. We are on our way. Come over to the other side and have a look at Tahiti. The sun's a little low right now, but uh, Tahiti Airport is right there. That's a fun one to come into if you want to check that out as well. A good look at the uh, engine and effects here. And we do have that ridiculously bright cabin light on. You can see that the seatbelt signs and um, I guess that would be the, yeah, the like uh, device light are on. Those will come off once we turn them off in the cockpit. So let's go back up to the cockpit. Just double check our uh, after takeoff checklist. Uh, landing gear is up, flaps are up, power management is inclined, engine bleed is fine. I did not turn off our taxi takeoff lights though. Um, and altimeters are set and checked. We are good to go. Let's bring up our map. Uh, where's our map on this side? So you can see there's our flight plan there. Uh, we do have some traffic off to the side. I don't know if I can see them with that sun. But there they are up there. Um, so we're going to rotate on over. And we're going to do a direct to uh, Teemo instead of joining up to this flight plan. So we're just getting this kind of lined up a little bit better to get over there. Let's, let's actually fly a little bit more over the island. Love it. I hope come back. I love looking at the, the little windows here. They've done a very good job with this world update. I think it's uh, got a lot of great detail, a lot of really cool airports. Uh, but saying that, let's go ahead and get our direct two. So the DTO button on your uh, MCDU is your direct two button. We'll go ahead and hit that. And you can see Tino is there. We'll go ahead and hit that. That puts a temporary in. You can see the, the yellow line. We're going to hit execute. And then we just need to come up and hit nav. And it's going to rotate us over. And we're going to fly direct to Tino now. As far as our performance of our climb right now, we're climbing out at about 1,700 feet per minute uh, at 170 knots. Um, which is what we have loaded in for our indicated airspeed and also what is being told from the MCDU um, in order to match up there. So we are set to go. Um, we're going to match up with that, continue our climb up to 15,000 feet. 
Um, if you want to zoom out, you have that one there. Zooming in is clicking down on the bottom. Uh, different modes are going to be uh, left and right. So you can come through the different options there. Um, and you can see traffic on there as well. Um, and also, if we zoom out a little bit here, actually, let's go to this screen here. And on our flight plan, we can actually click next, uh, next to go through our flight plan. And you can see our top of descent is right after the Romeo Uniform waypoint there. And that will allow us to come down. And really, it's going to get us to the 2,000 uh, foot mark that we put in for that that waypoint and then we'll be able to uh, fly that on in so everything is configured and looking really good uh, we'll get a little bit of glamour shots on the outside here as we continue our climb um, actually as we're just about to pass 10,000 feet the only thing that you would do here is you would come up and turn off your landing lights and we would do our uh, seatbelt signs in, device signs off, and I just like to ding the cabin crew and let them know that we are uh, really above 10,000 feet and let them know that they can, you know, do their thing and if somebody needs to get up and use the lavatory, they can. So, let's go ahead and jump to the outside and have a look at things. So we just had our thousand foot warning for our cruise altitude. Um, you can see it's taking us roughly eight, nine minutes to get up here. So not bad at all. These are not rocket ships though. Um, you know, our, we're roughly around 15 to 1800 feet per minute as we climbed. Um, you know, this, especially the 72 is a much heavier aircraft um, than the 42. Uh, and they're known not to, you know, climb at ridiculous rates, uh, but still nine minutes to get up to 15,000 feet is is not bad at all. I've taken this up to uh, 2,300 or 23,000 feet. Uh, same again, uh, you know, it didn't take all that long. Um, and, you know, you're butting up to the surface ceiling there at uh, 25,000. So as we level off here, um, you can see it's already changed over our, our sort of programmed management speed from the MCDU because it knows that we're now in cruise flight. We have not switched this over to cruise yet. So on here, you just want to take this and click over to cruise. And then you'll see that our power management is now set for cruise. And that's going to do our best to... Um, Again, this is not an auto throttle, so it's not going to manage our speed. It's managing our power. So it's not going to hit 245. Um, we'll probably balance off roughly around 220-ish. If you're wondering what this little yellow arrow means, it's this arrow is where you are going to be within 10 seconds. So in 10 seconds, we're going to be at 220. And We'll see where that balances out at. Uh, we've got the tiniest a bit of uh, sort of quarter headwind there. Um, I imagine we are going to, at this altitude, be around 285 for our true airspeed, uh, maybe a little bit higher. Um, as I've gone up higher in altitude, I've definitely hit 300 and above for true airspeed using uh, the managed speed mode. So. Um, all is well there. So one thing that I did want to talk about um, as part of like a review is more about the sounds. So um, they're not awesome, but um, they do have um, good sort of like situational awareness as far as the sound is concerned um, with the location and the, the prop noise. So they do change nicely with where you are located. Now, this is going to sound funny, but what I found um, 
particularly with this aircraft is <laughs> it, it, it sounds silly, but turn your volume up. Um, I found that if I turn up my volume a little bit higher than what I normally would in other aircraft, you start to get a lot more fidelity and you can notice different noises and it does sound a lot better. It, it definitely could be improved, but I have found that that is a, at least a good, uh, making the best out of a bad situation. Um, because they're they're a little i think too muted uh but hence turning up the volume but then you you do start to pick up a little bit more of uh definition and, and variations in in the noises that are being produced um when the volume is higher um so try that out it, it it's by no means i'd say that those that that's the one area that this aircraft needs um a little bit of an overhaul on is is the sounds um but um, crank up your volume and it helps. All right, we'll check in when we start our descent. Okay, so we're just passing over our top of descent. You can see it saying, okay, 2,000 feet, and it's got our little magenta marker there and we can click on um, and actually just reduce our altitude now um, and it gets a little abrupt you, you see how quickly that dropped down um, but um, it does work fine and the real aircraft they um, actually we're going to overspeed here in a second too um, they do a vertical speed mode and then mellow it out so we're going to come out of our um management mode there and just reduce our throttle down so that way we can descend and you can see we are letting the v path take us down we passed over our top of descent and everything is working out fine there and that should take us to that um that waypoint here the focal so if we can double check on actually sorry i'm on the progress page here let's go to the flight plan page uh at nomus it's got us at 3913 feet and then at vocal we'll be at 2000 so that's what we're looking for and hopefully that is going to happen for us we've got bora bora just off to our side here looking beautiful as ever um and we can just do our quick checklist here for our descent uh, the FWS is fine. Uh, landing elevation is on automatic. We're fine there. Um, as far as our perf page and everything, um, we are good, normal conditions. Um, no icing. I think we need their decision height. Um, I have in as at four. Uh, is it on there? Did I put it in? I thought I did. Why is it not showing up? Why the decision height is no longer popping up on there. Oh, I was looking in the wrong spot. There we go. Um, so on the uh, actual chart, it shows, sorry, on the chart, it shows that for there, we would be at 520 or um, at 450. I'm going to make it the lower one, actually, and go down to 450. So let's take that and bring that back down to 450. There we go. So, um, man, it is nice looking out there. Sorry, I keep on going to the window views just because I, I love looking at them. Got all those little vacation huts down there on the reef. Very cool. All right, um, so we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. And uh, so our plan is, is we're gonna come around. Um, we should be at 2000 feet at vocal and be level flying until really we pass 
here, and then we should be able to descend down to that 450. Um, that might... I haven't done this approach, so it might... It should pick up and be fine to, to take us down. Uh, but we'll see what the um, MFD actually displays for us on what it's actually going to be doing. And then we'll, once we get, uh, you know, pretty much one mile out, we'll disengage autopilot and fly on in manually. Might be able to see that. Yep, there's the airport right there. Very cool airport. This is also another one that is uh, along with World Update um, 13. So we'll definitely check that out. Uh, landing this, um, I, I go from good to acceptable, I guess. Um, sometimes I have a little bit of harsh touchdowns on them and um, wiggle a little bit. This, you know, on the, can I still see the runway? If I stick my head out the window, I can. Um, the exit is right there and the touchdown point is there. I try and do that. So it's gonna be an aggressive stop instead of having to do a back taxi to come to the gate. Um, but we'll see how, how good uh, we can bring that in. It's probably going to be too harsh of a stop for the um, passengers, but uh, that's going to be uh, what we're going to try and do anyways. So we'll continue our descent. We're going to be making our turn here, and I'll check back in once we're on uh, buckle and turning on to final. All right, you can see that we are going to hit buckle right right around 2000, which is great. And we're gonna be leveled off there. I've slowed us down to uh, our approach speed and we can go through our uh, before landing um, checklist here. Uh, so we are going to advise our cabin crew. Uh, I should have turned on uh, these things uh, already under 10,000, but I did not. So. Uh, we haven't got our landing gear down yet, but we're lining up. I'm going to go ahead and actually introduce the first notch of flaps. And I'm going to bring a little bit of power back in now. I did see some uh, comments about that this was uh, kind of hard to slow down. I haven't found that to be the case. Just remember that, you know, going flight idle, like idle is is okay in this. It's fine to bring your power all the way back uh, to keep your speed under control. Um, you, you know, you just want to watch your ITT and stuff like that, but it, it's it's totally fine to do that. It's not going to be an issue at all. So, um, actually, it didn't level us off at 2,000 at Bocal. It adjusted it to be 2,000 for there, so it kind of took over, uh, but that's okay. Um, uh, it is following the correct approach and not what I put in there, which uh, whether or not that is accurate, I, I don't know. But we're coming up here. I'm going to go ahead and drop that landing gear down. And we can go ahead and tick that off. Flaps are good. Power management, we want to get all the way over to takeoff. Uh, our TLU low speed is auto, um, uh, which is there and is marked as such there. That uh, limits your rudder. Um, icing, angle of attack, uh, light, we don't need that on. Exterior lights, um, we can, I think I got everything turned on now. We can turn our taxi and take off lights on now. And we are good. Uh, so that is our before ch checklist, uh, before landing checklist complete. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do another notch of flaps. So you can see we do have approach lit up here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually click on approach. And that should um, get us lined up a little better. Zoom on in here. Actually, let's go to this one. So you can see here, that's where it's got us our go around at. Um, so that's where we kind of want to disengage before then. Um, and fly it in manually. Just want to check to make sure that our approach, we do have a vertical flight uh, path is illuminated and we are descending down. So all is well there. 
we're we're looking a little high right now. We're coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and actually um, disengage here. Need yaw damper off as well. I'm just gonna pay attention to uh, flight speed there and having a look at the poppy lights. So you can see if I would have stayed on uh, nav mode or approach mode, it would have had us turned already, even though we weren't at that waypoint yet. Approaching decision height. Which is appropriate for, for that uh, waypoint. So that is perfect. Uh, we are fine to continue. A little low now. All right, let's see if we can't get this a good one. Off center line there a little bit. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those <laughs> uh, definitely came to a stop quickly. Uh, the passengers probably had uh, their hearts come out of their chest. <laughs> I really wanted to get this first exit. <laughs> There we go. Awesome. All right. So <laughs> I definitely did what I wanted to, which was come to a stop very quickly. Um, and we are going to get our sort of after landing checklist kind of taken care of there. Let's see, we're gonna we're gonna park up this way. All these other Air Tahiti guys, but uh, we got the coolest paint job out of all of them. Again, this is one of those bespoke airports, um, and this one is definitely cool. Um, I I really want to jump in something small like the uh, bird dog. Um, with floats and fly in and out of here because I think that would be pretty awesome. All right. Not too shabby. I'll take it. All right, parking brake is on. Uh, we'll get our gust lock on there. Uh, let's do our after checklist here. Radar is off. Flight controls are locked. Flaps are up. Trims are fine uh landing strobe lights off uh we have those off um and uh, uh, icing we can actually uh, already got those off actually i might have forgotten to turn those on um uh probe heating is off and then our tru can come off as well and we can go ahead and take uh condition level one and bring that to feather and then to shut off and we are good there. Parking, uh, parking brake is engaged. Taxi and takeoff lights, we can turn those off. Might as well turn off our logo and wing lights as well. Nav lights can come off. Beacon can stay on for right now. Condition lever two will bring you feather. Uh, beacon light, we can go ahead and off. And then uh, transponder is in standby. Tail prop on position. We can come over here and do our tail prop. And then, uh, wrong way. There we go. Tail prop and then seatbelt signs. We can turn off, off, and we are good. Uh, two. And then this one, if it's got two different checkpoints or uh, checklists there, if leaving the aircraft, um, turn your oxygen supply, uh, to off. Um, and 
Ice marine protection is off. Exterior lights are off. Emergency exits we can disarm. And our radar we already have off. Oh, this, this, up, up, up. Uh, okay, okay. And then go ahead and shut off that one. And then uh, fuel pumps one and two can come off. And check. check. Uh, unlock our cabin door. External power we didn't put on. We're fine there. And then we can go ahead and turn off our battery. There we go. We have arrived. We can go ahead and open up our main door here. Um, and let's just go outside and have a quick little look while I go over my final thoughts on this aircraft. All right. So final thoughts on the ATR uh, 72600 and 42600. Um, I'm glad I took the time to learn the aircraft before making this video. You can see we had a lot of fun in this flight. Um, there wasn't really any errors that happened with the autopilot. Uh, the descent worked fine. Um, everything uh, with the flight control or flight management, or power management worked um, accordingly. Um, the only thing that I'd say is really uh, in need of is just the sound is, is kind of poor. Um, and, you know, that's a little bit of blotchy textures inside the cockpit, but otherwise it flew really nicely. Reverse thrusters worked fine. Um, everything functioned as um, needed. I didn't test any of the icing stuff, but um, I'm sure that that works fine. The icing in Flight Simulator is poor at best. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think this is definitely a great aircraft. Had a lot of fun flying it. I think it's definitely worth a purchase. Um, there's a couple of functions miss missing out of the um, MFD and PFDs with um, showing uh, certain numbers and arrows on there compared to the uh, real world ones, but definitely not the end of the uh, world as far as usage goes. Those props feather just fine. As you can see, they are currently sitting in their feathered location. Um, and then obviously, this goes along with World Update 13, and we have these super cool airports to fly in and out of now, um, which I honestly, the value in that alone of having these free updates with these bespoke airports just more and more keep on happening, makes it better and better to go explore new places. So that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, take care.